Good Wednesday morning, my friends. Joy here. It is Wednesday, May 18, 2022. We started out in the love chapter yesterday, so let's do a little more in the love chapter today. What do you say? I am late getting started today. I had a special guest this morning. <laughs> You'll see on my other channel. Not right now, though. All right, yeah, it's about 1.15. We just finished lunch. So... Let's talk about 1 Corinthians chapter 13, starting at verse 4. What is love? The God kind of love. We're not talking about the I love, love, love that, or I absolutely love that. I mean, Americans now use love in all of the craziest ways. I mean, what happened to the word like? or I appreciate that, or I like that, or I care about that, or I'd like to have some more of that. Everything's like, I love, 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 I absolutely love. We're not talking about that kind of love. We're talking about the kind of love you have for other people, for each other. The God kind of love, the way God loves us. Okay, so let's start. Verse 4. Love is very patient and kind, never jealous or envious, never boastful or proud, never haughty or selfish or rude. Love does not demand its own way. Young people out there, I know young people don't listen to me because this stuff drives them crazy. But, oh my goodness, can we get the young people together in a giant auditorium somewhere and say, Hey, I would never say this, I'm way too shy to say it, but Almighty God who created you in His own image, look what He says in the Bible. Love does not demand its own way. <laughs> it is not irritable or touchy. It does not hold grudges and will hardly even notice when others do it wrong. Now I'll tell you what, there's some major love missing in this family of mine. Major, major missing. Talk about holding a grudge. How about holding a grudge for 10, 12, 15, 20 years? Huh? How about total disrespect and dishonor for Christian parents because they said something that you didn't like. They made you feel guilty. Can we talk about feeling guilty for a minute? Yeah. This person says that I control people by making them feel guilty and shameful. And so I control people that way. Hmm. Gosh, I wish I'd known that. I wish I had known that from day one. <laughs> oh, if I could control the things my children have done. If I could control the things my grandchildren have done and are doing. If I could control the way my great-grandchildren are being raised. Oh, if I could, if I could, if I could. With guilt, with shame, with whatever it takes. My grandma. Oh, you all would love my grandma. She was a real granny. Um... The granny on Beverly Hillbillies used to, re used to remind me of my granny. Her name was Hattie. And she was short. <laughs> she had the cutest little turned up nose. She had 12 children. Only seven lived. But, oh my goodness, she got saved. I don't know if she was an adult when she got saved or if she was a young girl when she got saved. But she was saved in a Nazarene church. And they teach salvation and sanctification. And my granny used to always say, I've been saved and sanctified for X amount of years. <laughs> and in church, she used to sit in the chair and wave her hanky. She's the cutest thing you ever saw. But I lived with them for one year. And every morning, my little granny, she must have been in her 70s then. But um, every morning, they lived in this old, old house that my grandpa actually built. Many, 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 many years earlier when they started having kids, they moved from Pennsylvania, and he built this house, and he wasn't going to put any closets in it. No closets. <laughs> and 
and Granny insisted that he put closets in it. So anyway, it's a two-story house, and the bedrooms were upstairs, and I stayed in the bedroom next to Grandma and Grandpa's bedroom. And across the hall upstairs, my Uncle Lynn was still home, and he lived in that bedroom. So there was just the four of us in the house. Oh, my Aunt Barbara was there, too. Aunt Barbara's bedroom was upstairs, too, if I remember right. It was my daddy's old maid sister. She had never been married yet. And she still lived there. So yeah, there was two bedrooms on one side of the head of the stairs and two bedrooms on the other side of the head of the stairs. And then a bathroom in between. And the bathroom only had a bathtub. No shower. So every single morning, my granny got up, got on her hands and knees next to that bed, on her knees next to the bed with her Bible, and she prayed. And she prayed loud. And she prayed out loud. And you could hear her all over the house. And she used to pray, Whatever it takes, Lord, whatever it takes, bring my children into the kingdom of God and bring them out of their sin and into salvation. And she would just scream it, Whatever it takes, whatever it takes. And that's the way I am now. Boy, if I could call up and give them some guilt and give them some shame and that would somehow control them, oh, let me do it, let me do it. <laughs> so wrong. You know, the thing about guilt is you can't make somebody feel guilty unless they are guilty. I mean, if you told somebody, boy, Joy Bernhardt, she's always robbing banks. And then you call me and say, well, I've heard that you're robbing banks. I wouldn't say, oh my God, I feel so guilty. I'm just going to die. I'm so guilty. I wouldn't feel guilty at all. Just, that's absurd. I don't know who told you that, but they're just idiots. I've never robbed anything. <laughs> but if you told somebody else, boy, that Joy Bernhardt, she got that YouTube channel, and she just says whatever comes to her head. She just says things, just craziest things. And um, she hurt my feelings when she said such and such. And then somebody called me and they said, Oh, so-and-so called me. And they said, You hurt their feelings because you said such and such on your channel. Oh, would I feel guilty. Oh, would I feel guilty. Guilty, guilty, guilty. I would come research it in the Bible. I would look it up on the Internet. I would find the person and see if they left a comment. I would apologize. I would do whatever. So guilt... Guilt is a good thing. Guilt is your conscience. Guilt is the God part of you saying, hey, what you're doing is wrong, and that's why you feel guilty about it. Do you see what I'm saying? So my kids, instead of when I say, you should honor and respect your father and include him in your holidays, and they say, oh, you made me feel guilty. The reason they feel guilty is because they're guilty, and they need to change their behavior, not according to me, not according to what I said, but compare it to the Word. These people are Christians. They have Bibles. Compare it to the Word of Almighty God. If you went to Jesus himself and you said, this person wrote me an email and said that I didn't honor my father, what would Jesus say? <laughs> uh, well, actually, <laughs> you don't. <laughs> Oh, my, my, my. And, and not just me. There's so many. I, I could give you example after example after example after example. The mother said something, made the kid mad, the kid never came back. I've known about it for years before I even had kids, where people's children have just gotten mad over something that was said, something that was properly said in most cases, and, all right, I'm out of your life. I never want to see you again. It's absurd, and it is the devil's doing. It has been known since I was a little girl, I used to hear my daddy talk about it, that America won't fall because of another country invading it. America will fall because of what is done right there within it. When they take over the schools and they can teach you all these lies and they can change your affections, your that your um, worship, your praise, your, your living, your learning, your everything. They just take control over everything. And they 
make the children feel like they're wards of the state and the government's smarter than their parents and nobody's going to tell them what to do and there's all kinds of gods, every nation has a different god and who knows what god's the real god and these young people are so mixed up. That's why they're killing themselves. What did Hagee say? I was shocked. Shocked. Did he say a hundred thousand? I think he said a hundred thousand young people died last year because of drugs. Overdoses on drugs or taking a dangerous drug that killed them. They took it killed them immediately And he said the drugs were coming here from China So yeah, hundred thousand <sighs> It's awful. It's just awful. It's just awful Anyway, we're talking about love and how can love make us feel so sad? <laughs> because we who know God, we who are Christians, we who are saved and have been forgiven and understand the Word of God, we understand where love is lacking. We understand where love is not being practiced. We understand where people are hating and calling it love. Sick. Just sick. What can we do about it? All we can do is be sure we're living right. Be sure we're acting right. Be sure we're loving others. So, I hope you got something out of that. <laughs> Things just come to my mind and I say them. Jerry studies for five, six hours for his Sunday message. <laughs> and um, I, just, I just don't do that because... Um, if I did, I would just be sitting there writing down all the things I just thought up to say to you. So I might as well just say them. You know how Joy Bernhardt just says whatever she thinks, right? I love you guys. I'll be back tomorrow.